I am Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is the handover on the brand new 2021 Oak Trail Tracker FB. So as we walk around the vehicle, we'll start on the driver's side. So the first thing you come to is just below here is the waste disposal point. So you drive over a grid on the way out of the site and anything you've put down the a plug hole, so sink, shower, kitchen sink, all goes into a holding tank and you open here and drain off. Obviously this is the main point you'd want to drain off in the winter to stop frostbite and frost damage as well. At the top here you've got your mains connectivity point. So this is where you hook up with your 25 meter hookup lead. So what you do is you get the collar lifted up and slide on like so. Always hook the vehicle up first, then go to your power source and obviously do it in reverse when unhooking the vehicle. In here, in here, all these lockers open with the round headed key, the black one. So you've got some storage, which is just behind your sink there. So a bit of storage in there. You've got your external shower point, which is a cold water feed. So what you need to do is make sure you've got enough water on board Make sure the pump's on to use this and you just push, pull this fitting off and it's like a hose pipe end, you'll get a hose pipe end with the vehicle that goes in here and has got a trigger going on the other end. And it's good for the dogs, the boots, the bikes if you've been in the mud or on this beach. And then here you do have your fresh water filler. So your fresh water filler has a little key that you can lock this flap down. And what you do is you simply put the hose in there and fill till overflows. You can see on the control panel above the habitation door how much is in the tank at any one time. If you can't get a hose pipe to the vehicle and you can bring an aqua roll or a bucket, you've got a pump there. So you've got 12 volt feed for a pump. So you put your pins in there, your tube in there and drop your pump into the water and then put tank fill on in the settings on the control panel, which I'll show you inside to fill if you want to fill that way. Here you have your Toilet, so you can set toilet to operate. You want to close the blade. If the blade's closed, you'll be able to lift and slide the cassette out. Remove the cap so it's like so. Go to your waste disposal point, which is normally behind or beside the toilet block. Press the button, tip out. Once you've tipped it out, if you put it some water in and give it a rinse and tip out again, and then the cap, you'd use the cap as a liquid measurement. Fill with liquid and tip in. If you are using the tablet form, you put a pint of water in and then you drop a tablet down to the toilet. But this won't come out if the blade is open. And at the back here, you do have your another drain off point. So this is your waste and the front is your fresh. I do believe, sorry about the misunderstanding there. And you just simply pull and you drain this. So waste at the back, fresh at the front as he fillers at the front as well. On the back of the vehicle you do have your high level brake light and reverse camera built in there and then you put your two bike rack bars here so if you did want a bike rack fitted this is where the body has been strengthened to take a bike rack. And then on this side this is underneath your bed so you've got a little storage compartment here and you've got your drain down for your winter. So this is your boiler for your winter drain. And when it's up like so, the boiler is drained down. When it's down like so, it's holding water. So in the winter, you'd simply drain the, freshen the waste off, lift this up, stop any water freezing in here as it holds 10 liters of water and it'll drain directly in the bottom corner outside. And then what you do is open all the taps within the vehicle and take the shower head off the shower hose and lie that in the shower tray and this stops any frost damage as it is your responsibility is in, isn't covered under warranty as you can see you've got your carpets you've got a three pin plug there which is great if you're going to sit out here and get power and you've got your external gas point so there with a zip tie is a spigot which clips onto here and then you get some gas hose in to connect from there to your barbecue and you'll obviously want some jubilee clips to connect the spigot to the hose 
This allows you to use the bottles on board instead of carrying a separate bottle for your barbecue or your gas appliance. You've got your Truma boiler vent, so when you have an awning on, just do make sure that you don't obstruct this, as this just allows all the fumes from the boiler and water heater out. You've got the two fridge vents and your awning light there. This door is on the centre locking, so you to open the front lock in the middle and open the habitation door at the back. Otherwise, you can get in with a little key as well, should you require. At the front here, you've got your LPG, so liquid petroleum gas. This is a gas locker, so again, opens with these locks. So it's half a turn of the key and, and a tap to lock, like so, and a half a turn to release and then a full turn of the handle. And then in here we do have space for two gas bottles. So this slides down there to make it easy to get the bottle in and out. You'd obviously make sure the bottle's securely fastened in when it's within the motor home. And you'll need a gas spanner or an adjustable wrench to attach the pigtail to the bottle. So it's a left hand thread. And then you want to nip it up with a spanner, turn on at the bottle, press here, which is your regulator, and the crash valve that allows the gas into the motor home. And then you want to make sure this little orange tab is pushed in as well which is the regulator for the water home. Obviously turn it off when you are travelling just because if there is any accidents it's safer should it be off. On the door here you have your lockable diesel filler which opens with the ignition key and because it's a Euro 6 compliant engine you've got add blue so this is an exhaust emission and it'll tell you on the dash between the temperature and fuel gauge it looks like a, an exhaust light a gust of wind and it's a 20 litre tank and you simply fill that up when the light comes on. Don't allow it to, don't keep driving it when the light is on as there is a risk that you can go too low on AdBlue and the engine simply won't start. So do just keep an eye on that. But that's all explained in your owner's handbooks. You've got your tyre pressure, so 5.5 bar all round, which is 5.5 bar, which is 79.5 psi. You've got your toolkit underneath your seat, so it has a jacknip brace and a torn eye in here. And underneath this compartment here is where your engine battery lives. But should you need to be underneath the dashboard, this is your dashboard release there. So we'll have a quick look and I'll show you the main things you want to know. So first of all, you've got your jump start points so this is your positive here so you put your key in here and lift and that's your positive on there and your negative on here for giving or receiving a jump start with either a jump pack or cables you've got a oil filler an oil dipstick and then you've got a brake fluid radiator fluid and power steering fluid and then your screen wash this does lift off to enable filling these more easy so once inside the vehicle this is your main control panel so you've got your heating and hot water but your main motorhome control panel which i'll go through first so you've got your on off button here which will either give you 12 volt if you're hooked up or well 12 volt if you're not hooked up or 240 if you are if you are hooked up you'll have a little electricity sign just here to enable you that you are hooked up then you can turn on and then below you've got your pump so if you've got enough water in you can turn your pump on unfortunately we have only got a little bit of water in as we are on the forecourt at the moment and the vehicle is drained down so you can turn your pump on which will make your taps work and pressurize them and then below you've got your levels so you can see we've got zero waste and zero fresh on board at the moment and then below that you can see your battery levels so you've got your leisure battery your Fiat engine battery, your active battery which always wants to be the leisure, your mains current and your solar. Obviously your solar goes to sleep when the vehicle is hooked up because it's bringing a bigger power source into the vehicle. And then if you go further into the settings by pressing the arrows on the side you can see your lighting settings so you can set your dimmer levels. You've got your screen settings, which is your timeout and your backlight, should it be too bright or not bright enough. And then you've got your date and time there as well. 
but like I was saying about the tank heaters, this is for the water tanks underneath the chassis. So if it's going to freeze overnight, if you just pop them on, puts current through the water and stops the water from freezing. Next to it, you've got your Truma heating and hot water control panel. So if you press and hold here, you'll turn it on, and then if you press to enter, you'll get the menu. So you've got the motor home with the thermometer in, which is the temperature of the vehicle. So you can have it all the way to 30 or all the way to off. So for this, we'll just say 30 degrees as, as it's quite cold and we'll get the vehicle to temperature. And we'll press enter, and that's preset that to 30 degrees. Moving further along, you've got the water in the thermometer. This is how hot you want your water. So should you have water on board, you can have it on hot eco, which is 40 degrees of heating your water, hot, which is 60 degrees, or boost, which turns off the heating and prioritizes the water to get up the temperature. So normally, normally you would just put it on hot. And then if you go further along, this is what source you want to be heating the water and the vehicle off. So you've got gas on its own, so should you be wild camping and not hooked up, you'd use your gas. You've got one kilowatt of gas and one kilowatt of electric. You've got gas and two kilowatts of electric, which you'd use in the winter months to get the vehicle to temperature and heat the water, should you be in desperate need of water. So you'd always start it off with that, give it off now and then put it on to electric if you're on a site. But let's give it the boost that it needs. And then you've got electric on one kilowatt and electric on two. So just depending on what site gives you um, what amperage, you can use either one. But more sites you can use two within the country. It's normally one on the continent. Then moving further along, you've got the fan. So you're going to have it on eco or high. Eco saves your battery a little bit and doesn't make it as loud. High obviously blows it harder around the vehicle. And then going down to the bottom right, left corner, sorry, you've got your timer, so you can time the heat to come on and off. You've got a clock there for the display panel. And should you get a triangle in the middle, which is a warning triangle, which means something has failed. Either you've run out of gas, your electric's tripped, you can go to the spanner setting, and you can go to reset. Go to reset, then press preset. So press reset, press preset, and it'll reset the panel. And to turn off, you just press and hold. So now in the washroom area, to operate your toilet, what you need to do is you need to make sure the pump's on. You press this button and it'll fill with water. So always flush the toilet first before use. Then to open the blade, you've got a grey lever. So if you slide it to the right, it opens the trap door, which is the blade. Use the toilet with the blade open, but always flush first as it lubricates the blade. Do what you need to do, flush and then shut the blade, which then allows you to get the cassette out the outside of the vehicle should you need it. You'll get on here a light when the cassette is full, so it's normally a red light when the cassette's full, indicating it needs to be changed. You've got your light here for your washroom. Toilet cabinet there with a tie back to hold toilets in place, another one here and a double one underneath the sink. Your plug on the sinks are push and then open this skylight you need to pull your body weight down on it and slide it along and then you do have a blackout blind and a fly screen on there as well. With the shower screen do make sure that the shower screen is tied back when travelling, it stops it moving around. You've got a lovely hanging rail for towels but also doubles up as an extra wardrobe or when you're travelling and if you've been caught in the rain, hang your wet clothes in here, shut the door, put the heating on, gets lovely and warm. And then another tip is, when you're winterising, if you just unscrew the shower head from the shower hose and allow the shower hose to lie in the shower tree, as if it's in its holder, any water will coil and get caught at the bottom, as you can see it's looped, and leave all taps open within the motorhome. In your, in your bedroom area, you've got the same skylight as your washroom. You've got your lights here, and then them two lights are individually switched on their own as the reading lights. And then open the cupboards if you just pull the handle and open. You've got here a stand for a TV, so you've got a 12 volt TV and 240 3 pin socket. Storage in here. 
obviously a good amount of storage underneath the bed. So the there and obviously your boilers underneath there and your boiler drain in the back corner like I've showed you from outside. Wardrobe with hanging rail and light there that comes on with the door. And shelving underneath. Above the fridge is where you'll find your solar panel at the back, which is flashing green, which means it's charging. At the back in the top corner, you've got your motorhome Wi-Fi. So there is a router that clips on there that we've got in the sales office, which requires a SIM card. So what it do is it's a Hawaii um, mobile Wi-Fi. It clips on there, clips into these. So one's Two of them are aerials, one's a power lead. Aerials on the roof which boosts your signal. You put your SIM in the back, which I would advise going to your phone provider and getting a pay monthly SIM instead of pay as you go, as you'll always have data on it. And then if you take the back off, you'll also find the key for your password for the Wi-Fi. But the SIM goes behind the battery, and then in here you have your TV aerial booster so you can boost the signal there like so on the wheel. Now on to your fridge, so this is your fed fridge fridge, so you turn on and off here. And then if you press the square button, you can see what source you're on. So if you press and hold, it'll start flashing and you can move the arrows from source. So you've got hook up there, which is mains electric. You've got battery, which is a design to keep the fridge at the temperature it was when departing. So it's like you keep cool, so you make, makes it into a cool box and it is powered off the engine battery, not off the leisure battery, so it's only when the vehicle's running it will get a feed of power on the battery. And then you've got gas if you were wild camping and you would just select there. Or you can go all the way along and you can go to A, A is automatic. It's got like a brain, it, can, it will work out what power is best for you. So if I start the engine, it will go on to um, battery. If I was to hook up, it will go on to hook up. If I was to take the hook about and the gas was to be open it would switch over to gas but the battery setting is designed to pre-chill the fridge before so you have to hook the vehicle up before you go away put your shopping in allow it to get a temperature and then it will just keep the temperature the same when you travel and then one last thing with the fridge once you've finished using it if you do clean the fridge out and then the last thing you want to do is shut the door so if you just leave the door ajar it will then allow air circulation in and out the fridge. You'll also notice beside the fridge is where you'll find your table. So your table's basically like an ironing board table. Iron, you'd fold the legs up, you can put that at the front or you can take it outside if it's a nice day. But when you're traveling, put it back in here and it'll stay nice and secure. Across from the fridge is your U-shaped kitchen. So you've got your gas rings there. So, and one electric this side. The oven light so there you go you've got your three gas rings one electric allow this to cool before you put the glass lid down and then below you do have your your grill and then below that you've got your oven One thing with the oven shelf is if you make sure these two grooves are at the back of the oven as that's the way the shelf's designed for safety of the burner. And if you, when traveling, if you either wrap these up or take these out as these can be the main cause of the rattle when on the road. Below the, here you have some storage. You do have your plug here for your electric hot plate. It just clips in there any problems with the hot plate you can isolate the plug and you've got your water pump at the back so that's where when the when you open the tap that's where the vibration will kick in at the back because the pump will be working and below your fridge you've got your gas taps so gas taps are along here these grey taps these are mainly for when the vehicle is habitation serviced in line with the 
National Caravan Council guidance, a technician will test each gas appliance. Should you have any problems with the gas, turn it off at the bottle just to be safe. Above you've got your microwave, so this is just a normal household microwave. Just clips on there like so. And only works on 240. And as you can see, this is the router that clips on to the housing in there. So it's a Y mobile Wi-Fi and that clips on and to the aerial on the roof of the motorhome and will boost your signal. Plates, bowls and cup racks there for you. And then your windows at the back. got your black your blackout and your fly screen and open your windows you'd open the levers and then to stay out just tighten these bring in loosen them make sure all skylights and windows are securely fastened before you drive anywhere and then you do have your kitchen light and a three pin plug on the side of the kitchen you have a worktop extension which on a very strong magnet there so that just lifts up and underneath you've got your cutlery tray and then you just loosen the arms like so and then you've got some storage underneath there as well so now coming into the lounge you'll notice that you've got reading lights on all four corners they are individually switched just like the two by the bed wine bottles and wine glass holders Storage in there and storage at the front. You'll notice with the new tracker, this is like a super low finish. So, as you can see, it's, it slopes away. So, you do have storage in either side and a light here to do the lights around the skylight. So, that one opens like a window, and that one you just turn to loosen the levers off and slide open like so. But like I said, make sure these are shut before you drive off and you do have a blackout blind and a fly screen on both windows. Underneath this seat is where you'll find your power supply unit. So your power supply unit is here. And it has got your system shutdown button on so you can turn it the battery isolation switch which is a system shut down and it'll not stop any ice stop any power drain on the battery that's what i meant to say and then you have your charger and your hot water heating and hot water leave these on as these will work for the 240 side elements for the heating and hot water and the charger and of course if this wasn't on you can use it on gas you've got your mcbs and rcd trip testers so if you trip out on ele mains electric you can try here and then you do have your 12 volt fuses which are all listed on the back which does what so i would carry some spares and then to make the bed what you need to do is pull it forward the leg there falls down pull that one forward and do the same with this one And then what you need to do is use the backrests in the middle to form the infill cushion. But what I'd also recommend is you turn all the cushions upside down, including the bases, as you get a flatter night's sleep on the flatter surface. So it's just a switch here as well which is your night light for the bottom of your toilet door. So that's how you turn that off. And while I'm on about that system shutdown button, I forgot to mention, should that be off and you take the vehicle for a drive in the winter to obviously keep the engine battery topped up and the brakes and tires and everything um, rotating, the reverse camera and the head unit won't work because the system shutdown button controls the head unit as well. So to operate the Aftex TV on the all new tracker in the new media centre where it's positioned, 
First of all, there's a small button in the bottom corner here. So if I just show you by slotting the telly in, it's a button just down there. So this is a master switch. So make sure that's turned on first of all. And then you can then use the remote and turn the TV on. Once the TV comes on to retune it, you press AQT. So you press and hold to tune the telly. So I'll just press and hold it there. And once you press and hold, you'll get a blue screen asking you what country you're in. It's automatically set the UK, press OK, and it'll do an auto tune and find as many channels as it can. So now in the cab, you've got your handbrake to the right of the driver. And then on the door, you've got your Remus car blinds, which you pinch and slide forward to black the driver's door and passenger door out and then on the door itself you've got your electric windows and electric mirror adjustments which is the top and the blind spot on the cab you'd slide pinch and slide that one pinch and slide that and meet in the middle like so and then if it was going to be a windy night i would advise putting something round here as it's just magnets which hold them in place and then down to the right of the driver if you don't want your start stop you can turn it off but your start stop will only work if there is sufficient power in the battery on the engine you've got your rear fogs and headlight adjustment you wipe a stalk with your trip computer on the end which goes through the screen in the middle tells you uh, range miles per gallon instant fuel usage traveling time distance traveled and so on you've got your lights and indicators cruise control on the top which you then get the vehicle to speed and push up off or speed limiter cancel resume on the ends so should you have to brake you can then press this and it'll go back on to the uh, designated speed that you were set mute volume hands free answer decline and this skips through the radio channels or your contacts this one has got the nine speed manual gearbox as an option so it comes standard with a six speed manual gearbox and you've got drive modes there which goes above the p as you can see p in the corner r n for neutral and drive or you can go power normal or eco to be fair just leave it in normal you get no gain using it in eco just limits the revs here you've got your traction control so you can turn your traction control off and you've got hill descent control with it being an automatic hazards locks the door including the habitation door so there is central locking on the habitation door and your heated mirrors usb for charging on the top there and a 12 volt for charging Fans, temperature, fan speed, aircon, must be on at least one or more for the aircon to work. Distribution, so where it wants to go, face, screen, feet, and then either bringing fresh air in or recirculating air. Now getting onto your Xcent head unit. So when the maps is working, there'll be a card in here, which is just in the office there and the GPS will work. You've got radio. So, your radio's FM, or you can switch over to DAB and pick up any DAB channels. So, you can scroll for your DAB, you can go to the list, and it'll find them. Just takes a moment to load. And it'll find our national channels, which are your BBC and so on. And it'll find our regional channels, which are tiny and weird. And then you can press 1 to 6 to save. Or you can switch over to FM if you can't receive DAB. You've got camera here, so you can go to the camera. 
which is your reversing camera I'll just put the vehicle in So once the engine's on, you'll be able to put it into reverse and your rear view camera will come on. You can also press camera if you turn the head unit back on. You can also press camera when the engines running and you get your rear view so you can drive with this on down the road the beeping in the background is just to tell me I'm hooked up so don't go anywhere or you can go to Bluetooth and you can connect your phone by going into your phone settings on Bluetooth and look and then pressing the sync button and it will bring up your phone on here click it on your device and here and press pair on here and your device and then it will ask you if you want to download your phone book press allow and then if you want you can use the music which is just down here and it'll stream your music off your phone via bluetooth audio you can go to usb ipod when the usb is connected to the head unit which are in the top glove box there which is heated and cooled by the air conditioning And if you did want to update it, you can go into settings and update the head unit. You can go on to XN's website, the free updates. This number of head unit is XF270, so 270. And you can update it by plugging, downloading this, the update onto a memory stick, plugging the memory stick into the USB and pressing in, and then just putting the ignition on and this will notice that the updates in and you then you'd go to here and press software install so you'd install the software you can see the stuff software version by the top one and this is v20 then in volume and you can turn it off here cup holders glove box there and if you did want to turn your seats you would just use here turn if it did get stuck on the door you would just pull it forward and push it back and adjust the driving position and like I say is the add blue light comes in between here and there this has now brought us to the end of the handover demonstration on the brand new auto trail tracker FB should you have any questions regarding this or want to speak to a member of our sales team please contact 0127 272 or email sales at timevalleymotorhomes.co.uk sorry thanks for watching this handover tutorial video